What's happening is the base colour is being repeated under here. Any paint that's going to get in under that tape is base colour, so when you paint over the top of it, there won't be any contrasting bleeds. Does that make sense? Here's somebody's just started this painting and then left it, but I suspect that this was going to be a seascape. So as a, as a base, if I want to actually um, establish a decent horizon line, then I've kind of measured down, put tiny little chalk marks, pulled it across, and now we just make sure that's down like so. If this was richly painted already and I just wanted to make tidy up the uh, horizon line, then I could, pr and there were lots of colours involved, then I would probably just seal it off with a thick oil medium, just painting along there like a glue and that would go in underneath and stop any more paint going. The other option is what I was doing before with the white, but this time with the black. I'm spreading it thinly because you can see I want to sort of match what's happening there at the moment. Later, if I choose to layer it with more colours, I can do that. But at the moment, all I would do is just make sure that this edge is nice and sealed off. Okay. Now, if this was a full-scale production number video, what we would be doing would be letting this dry for three days, four days, maybe a week, and then we'd come back and then I would continue to paint the foreground because this would be quite dry. I don't want to do that. This is just a handy hints clip and just to give you an idea. But that's what you do to seal that off. Do you understand that any paint that snuck, snuck in underneath that tape is the same colour as what's happening there? Now this is an unresolved surface, but at least I'll have that dead straight line to go by, and that's the same as what's happening here. Even though that's orange against blue, it floats in nicely and it's absolutely crisp and clean, and you can always come back carefully and use that as a reference point, and I can see the way the brush, the way the brush strokes are going. That's what the artist did. They came back and they just came up to that line. But if you've got a nice dead straight line to work with, it makes life a whole lot easier. Now I'm going to show you um, how this works in the wonderful world of acrylics. Probably a little bit easier with acrylics because of the drying time. However, acrylic by its very nature tends to be more fluid and a bit runny, so sometimes you get this under the tape problem. This isn't as simple as just a Bridget Riley doing black and whites where you can just lay in one colour along the edge We've got lots of colour changes here, uh, slight textural changes, but nothing massive. This isn't hugely impasto. There's the odd little clots of slightly thicker paint. But what we do in this event, if you've got, if you want to do uh, cordon off an area, what I've decided to do just for the heck of it, I'm going to keep this, but I'm going to paint around the edge of it and separate it so that appears in itself, as an entity in itself. Then I'll fade it out over here because I'm going to actually paint over this little section here. I'm going to tint that some, okay? So what we've got here is a variety of acrylic resins. We were talking about this before, how many different things there are in the wonderful world of acrylics. This is just simply a binder. It's what's inside all the paints you might hope to use, like any paint straight out of the tube, it's, this is the um, polymer that holds it all together. So these are actual varnishes, but varnish is fine for this purpose. There's two here, the red label is called satin varnish, this is a matte varnish. You can also get a gloss. You will find that if you leave the tape for any length of time, it will start to stretch and lift off, so you have to be careful before you start painting. 
make sure it's really sticking well. Now I'm just going to do a preliminary seal on the inside of this circle and on the outside of that circle and I'm only going to be using a clear varnish. It's milky now, it dries clear. Just pour a little bit out here into that container. You notice I'm going to go ahead making sure that it is really being sealed off and then I just lightly dab that on. Whoops making sure it's squeezed down and just dabbing that on the edge so that what this does is just a clear blocking if there's any bleeding going on and it's quite possible that being stretched and made to turn corners that there might be little lifts but if there are little lifts like that any bleeding that goes on will be blocked by this clear mix now this does not shine, it doesn't dry with a shine, it's a matte, so it should be fairly invisible when it's finished. Alright, so I'm just sliding on the inside this time, and then we are going to take a short break, because this needs to dry before you apply any colour to it, because you don't want colour running in under the tape, preventing that kind of crisp, crisp tonal and colour jump. We've managed to dry around here. Yay! Let's have a go. I thought what I'd do is I'd shove a bit of dark on this, just to echo the blue that's already in there. I'm not going to push under there. I'm just going to use a little bit less there. And then I'm going to use good old cotton cloth and a pinky. And I'm just going to mop up the excess because I don't want it to scream too much. I just want it to have a little bit of a contrast with what's going on elsewhere in the painting. Then I'm going to use my finger, thumbs are great for this sort of thing, round and round and round. What that does is it gives a slightly more of a, an orb look to it. Take a little bit out of the middle again, so we get that tiny ghost of that original pink and then just take that out to the edge. Now hopefully that didn't bleed. It might well have bled, in which case this entire exercise has been a complete waste of time, but haven't we had fun on a rainy afternoon? I know I have. Okay, so I'm going to leave that. Now we're going to go on to the outside. This is just a, a transparent magenta. I've gone and I've added a tiny bit of the original seal of varnish to it to make it make sure it's compatible. I've used a little bit of the bind, same binder that went in under the tape hopefully and giving it that transparency also helps me keep some of the richness of the colors that are here and just go round and round I can see there's a couple of little blips in the tape rising up there. We could have trouble with that, but hey, it was worth the effort. I kind of like this green, so what I'm going to do is just reduce the impact here and just have it a slightly dulled green. All right, well, we've just been drying off this. You can see here if I just, can you see that's a bit wet? It's all right, the thing is that you just be careful and you lift it away from where you're supposed to go. That is not very accurate taping. Whoa! One down, two to go. We go around the other way. Oh! There's a tiny mini bleed there, but it's not too bad. With something like this, <laughs> when you can see how much care was taken in the underpainting. Ah, look what's happened here. Ooh, that's not good. The, uh, that's still wet and it's stuck. Ooh, let's just try this. Ooh, isn't that interesting? It's actually sticking. No, it's not working, it's ruined. Can't do it. So uh, what, happened to that one? what happened was the acrylic that I used, this hasn't really, it needs to dry a lot longer. Yeah. The hot drying 
it hasn't really helped. You need needs to be a cold, like let it dry slowly. But anyway, with a piece like this, it doesn't matter. See how it's tearing away? Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. So that's because it needed to be dried. Dried like really slowly. Dry. Yeah. Um, look at that. It's peeling away like a skin. It's ruined. Ah. Oh, but nice. It's a <laughs> beautiful torn edge there. It went really fun. well on the, the large one. It did. But that smaller one really needs to be dried naturally a lot longer. We only left it not long. Really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And probably it was, uh, it could have something to do with the paint, that, that particular pigment. So that's just really flaky and weird. I rather like that. Kind of nice. <laughs> okay, folks, well, there you have it. The problem was this one. It's all lumpy and terrible. That's got to do with the fact that I used quite thick paint on that and also I hit it with the hair dryer and I suspect it was touch dry, but it wasn't cured. And because I was wiping the inside out to get that kind of orb effect, it was pushing more paint out to the edge. And so although it, it seemed to be dry, it wasn't. It actually formed a skin. And as I pulled the tape away, it actually created that weird little flangey look, which I kind of like, but that wasn't the point of the exercise. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you had fun watching this because we had fun making it. I've never had so many disasters happen in such a short time. <sighs> Thank you from the Gold Coast Art School.